Well, good morning and welcome. Today's service is Any Bowl Can Be a Chalice. It started out uh, just being a serendipitous search for interesting readings and ones that provide, at least for me, when I saw them and read them aloud, felt like sources of some comfort or inspiration during difficult times. And uh, I hope that the, the readings that I've selected, there are four of them in addition to the chalice lighting, uh, will give you some comfort or be thought provoking. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Unitarian Church of Edmonton is the welcoming congregation. This means our community is open to all without regard to race, gender, sexual orientation, age, or income. You are welcome here. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton gathers with gratitude on Treaty 6 land. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another, good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to all of our children. The Order of Service starts with lighting the chalice, then readings, sharing abundance, candles of care and connection, two more readings, a musical interlude, a fourth reading, and extinguishing the chalice. Any bowl can be a chalice. Any vessel can be sacred if it holds the flame of hope, and the fire of endless faith. Any bowl can ultimately serve to quench the unending thirst for truth and understanding, justice, holiness, and peace. And that is from a poem by Hugh McPherson, who was a member of the Kelowna Fellowship. And I first heard that poem in 2002. If any bowl can be a chalice, any bowl can also be a source of comfort and nourishment for anyone that can share it. And this next reading, A Recipe for Resilience, just seemed to be the, the right reading to come after talking about the chalice itself. This Recipe for Resilience is a reading written by Margaret Weiss, and it came from the UUA worship web. This recipe has been tweaked over time, so adjust as necessary. Sometimes it yields more servings than anticipated. Sometimes it needs a bit more of this ingredient or that. It comes from generations who have gone before me, and I've added my own flavor along the way. So the recipe itself for resilience, one part courage, two parts tears of failure and doubt, one part deep listening, one part each of both silence and laughter, a dash of trust, a pinch of wonder, a heaping scoop of naps and snacks. In a separate bowl, mix together family, friends, and those who challenge you to be your best self those with whom you disagree. Add slowly to the larger pot. Add a bay leaf for whatever it is that bay leaves do. And let simmer for as long as you need, which is often longer than you realize and anticipate. Keep the heat at an even temperature, hot enough to cook throughout, but not so hot it burns the bottom. 
It can be served at room temperature, warm, or even cold if necessary. Serve alongside your favorite soft blanket or your dog, cat, or other soft item. Make often. Share with others. Hold on to the leftovers. You'll need them after a long day that challenges your soul. And I am sorry, I have lost my visual. There we go. Sharing our abundance is something that we do, whether we're together or apart. We're a self-governing and self-supporting community. We rely on donations to support staff and programs. During this unprecedented time, we need your financial support more than ever to maintain connections with members and friends. Many of our members contribute on an ongoing basis with automatic donations from set up electronically. Others send checks on a post-dated basis. You can also, if you prefer to go online, go through the Unitarian Church of Edmonton website. You can find a link to ATB Helps or Canada Helps. We also make a point of sharing our abundance with a community group. And when we're together, we're able to pass the basket and any loose change is evenly split between the congregation and the community group. Now that we're holding online meetings, the best way to make a donation to the community group is to go to the website and make a donation there. For the month of July, our community group is CEASE, the Center to End All Sexual Exploitation. The community group for the month of August will be the Boyle Street Community Services. And now I invite you to stay muted, but sing along with the song, From You I Receive, To You I Give. And I'm sorry, that one cut off, and I don't know how to get the good sound file back, but we'll work on that for the next one. We have a tradition, both in the Unitarian Church of Edmonton and in the wider denomination, of sharing candles of care and concern, celebration, marking the milestones of our lives. As we're meeting virtually, we invite you to enter your candle into the chat mode and, uh, or email it to candles at uce.ca. And while the candles are being lit, We'll listen to The Mists of Cape Breton by Gordon Ritchie. Thank you. 
I don't know if I'm the only one, but I'm not hearing any music. Oh, I'm hearing it. I'm hearing uh, it. I can hear the harp in the background. It's soft. When you do the share the screen, there is a share your audio thing in the lower right. I don't know if you hit that. Is that better? Yes, that's coming too now. Ed. When I was listening to it on my desktop computer last night, it was distorting, so I turned it down a bit, and uh, I don't know if that made a difference. How do I stop that? The easiest way is to end your slideshow and then begin from whichever slide you want to begin from. Okay. So if you right click in the middle of your slide, you should get a thing that says end show. Yeah, right at the bottom. End show. Okay. And then, then click on whatever slide, slide you want to start. And from current slide. Thank you. It never works the same way twice. <laughs> the next reading is titled, What Makes Life Meaningful? Written by Devin Fry. And it's in the August edition of Psychology Today. What makes life meaningful? A sense that life has meaning doesn't just offer philosophical benefits. It's also tied to improved physical and mental health. What factors, apart from close relationships and personal accomplishments, foster a belief in a meaningful life? Three recent studies highlight some potential mechanisms for meaning. What really matters? Researchers who study meaning in life have broken the concept into three faucets, coherence, the feeling that life makes sense, purpose, having and working toward goals, and mattering. That's the sense that one's life has value and makes a difference. University of Sussex psychologist Vlad Kostin argues the last factor, mattering, may be the most crucial. In three experiments, participants' sense of mattering most reliably predicted whether they saw life as meaningful one month later. Though it wasn't known why participants felt their lives mattered, Costin thinks that it could have resulted from either their believing in God, contributing to others, or leaving some form of legacy. Another study focused on what is titled the golden age. Confidence in life's meaningfulness may be greatest around age 60 on average. A recent study suggests it was using data from 1,042 US adults and the University of California San Diego researchers found the presence of meaning in life followed a curve over the lifespan reaching its peak at approximately age 60 before declining again. The search for meaning, on the other hand, 
followed an opposite trajectory, reaching a low point at 60 before climbing. Regardless of age, physical and mental well-being were both strongly correlated with a belief in life's meaning. So even if we don't know what meaning means, if we're searching for it, we're thinking it's out there somewhere, and that in itself can be a correlation of, of good uh, well-being. Everything in its place. Many seek meaning through extraordinary experiences, but they may also find it in ordinary acts. New research found that a preference for routines was correlated with a greater sense of meaning. Students tracked for a week reported somewhat greater meaning on average when engaging in everyday acts, studying or commuting. Perhaps the authors note because routines build a coherent sense of self. Study co-author and Rutgers University psychologist Samantha Heinzelman observes moments that make sense and feel right can make life meaningful too. So that's the prosaic way of looking at meaning. Oh, that's the wrong way arrow. If any bowl can be a chalice, any slide can be a slide, I guess. Um, I want to find, there we are. No. This next reading is by Richard Wag Wagamas, Wagamese. I'm not spelling his name accurately and not pronouncing it well, but the book is titled Embers, One Ojibwe's Meditations. And it's titled, I Am My Silence. I am my silence. I am not the busyness of my thoughts or the daily rhythms of my actions. I am not the stuff that constitutes my world. I am not my talk. I am not my actions. I am my silence. I am the consciousness that perceives all these things. When I go to my consciousness, to that great pool of silence that observes the intricacies of my life, I am aware that I am me. I take a little time each day to sit in silence so that I can move outward in balance toward the great clamor of living. And let's now take a moment of silence while I find the sound file for the song that I want to play next.
And I was trying to get all through the night, our hihanos, into that slide. But that was actually the... Um, Gathering the Dew, which is the uh, piece that I used back at the Flower Communion time. And the fourth reading talks about sacred texts in Unitarian Universalism. <laughs> Sorry, the cat got on the keys again. Let's... Luckily, that's a good song. One might say that life is our scripture. While well, Unitarianism and Universalism both have roots in the Protestant Christian tradition, where the Bible is the sacred text, we now look to additional sources for religious and moral inspiration. Over two centuries, our religious tradition, a living tradition, has branched out from its roots. We celebrate the spiritual insights of the world's religions, recognizing wisdom in many scriptures. When we read scripture and worship, whether it's the Bible, the Dhammapada, or the Tao Te Ching, we interpret it as a product of its time and its place. There is wisdom there, and there are inspiring stories, but scripture is not to be interpreted narrowly or oppressively. It can be beautiful, inspirational, and wise, but in our tradition, scripture is never the only word or the final word. From the beginning, we have trusted in the human capacity to use reason and draw conclusions about religion. Influenced by experience, culture, and community, each of us ultimately chooses what is sacred to us. We are people of many beliefs. The stories, poetry, and teachings of ancient scriptures are a significant source of inspiration for a number of Unitarian Universalists. In Unitarian Universalism, you can bring your whole self, your full identity, your questioning mind, your expansive heart, by creating many communities that draw from many wisdom traditions. We have more than one way of experiencing the world and understanding the sacred. What we call living tradition draws from six sources of inspiration, from scripture to poetry to modern day heroes. Reverend Kathleen Rollins has said, throughout history, we have moved to the rhythms of mystery and wonder, prophecy, wisdom, teachings from the ancient and modern sources, and nature herself. And that gives a nice listing of the six sources, which um, will be looked at in the uh, August 2nd uh, service, which is coming up. And now, extinguish the chalice, and the words to go with that are written by Elizabeth Sally Jones. We extinguish the chalice, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And I invite you to sing, carry the flame of peace and love until we begin. Oh. <laughs> That song really wants to play 
more and more. <laughs> we could use it for the closing music. Let's try that again. Above. And just to let you know what is coming up, we have Wednesday evening conversation nights from 7 to 8.30 p.m. And the topic varies from evening to evening. You can check the calendar in the Unitarian Church of Edmonton webpage to see what is happening with each week. There's Zoom practice with Vancouver Unitarians every Thursday at 3, Edmonton time. And again, see the UCE calendar for links. Are there any other announcements coming up? You can unmute and share what I you want. I just want to remind everyone that a survey will be emailed out um, today. So that will hit your inboxes either today or tomorrow. If you don't get the email, please contact Janet at the office so she can check what happened. But we need your input for the August um, 12th board meeting. So please fill out the survey. Thank you. Any other announcements? Well, we'll talk about the August 2nd service, which is coming up next Sunday. Wisdom in the Six UU Sources, and that's a joint service with the Westwood Unitarian Congregation and the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. August the 9th, Finding Our Way to UCE, and that's uh, being led by Susan Rattan. Susan you've done a stellar job of keeping us on track and giving us at least a once, once, a, once a month service that is well organized and well run, not driven by the cat. And now we'll go into the breakout room